The plot of the captivating slow-burning Turkish movie Chokehold centers on Yalan Sahin, a dishonest businessman, and Beza, his wife. Warning, there will be spoilers. The couple moved to a village in Assos from Istanbul. There were people there that Yalan was familiar with because he had grown up there. The father refused to serve Yalan while his friend at the grocery shop asked him for financial advice. Yalan's unsettled nature was immediately apparent, but we were unsure of the cause. But finally, a television program exposed Yalan as the brains behind a Ponzi scheme. In order to defend himself, he worked with the district attorney's office and disclosed his partners. Yalan was granted parole until his next hearing, but his partners were imprisoned and had their property taken. Yalan went back to his hometown to make amends for his errors, but leaving was not always the best course of action. When Yalan went into an antique store to take a gift, the store owner recognized him. Sevdet lost every penny he had put into Yalan's program with the help of his mother's money. He was resolved to kill Yalin as soon as he understood that the man who entered his store was Yalin. Yalin overpowered Sevdet and whacked him with an object in the head as he attempted to choke Yalin. Yalin killed the man and was horrified and in shock. Although his first reaction was to flee, he understood that if the body was discovered, disaster awaited him. He took the body and hid it in the bushes before going on with his life. Salami Tokar, a state police officer, immediately began questioning Yalin about his role. Salami assumed Yalin killed Sevdet after he attempted to attack him because Yalin's automobile was observed outside the antique shop. Salami was unable to arrest Yalin due to a lack of proof, but he also harbored resentment toward him for taking his money. Salami forewarned him that the people would end his life even if he did not act right away. After talking to the policeman, Yalin lost his composure. He was concerned about losing the freedom he had gained by helping the prosecutor. He received a message from the people in the shape of a severed snake and was addressed as Mr. Snake. At his home, Yalin experienced constant fear. He had an axe and a knife handy to kill anyone who tried to enter. A shadow caught his attention, and he began to follow it. However, he soon discovered that the figure he was pursuing was Sevdet. He was so terrified and panicked that he had lost all sense of reality. Yalin was attacked by another angry villager shortly after struggling to recover from his first kill. He choked the man, then hid his body in the bushes alongside Sevdet's. Several undocumented immigrants saw him as he was hiding the body, but the person in charge of them distracted them. Both parties made the decision to ignore the entire circumstance. The next day, Yalin encountered the young man. He agreed to lend the man his truck in exchange for helping him cross the border into Greece. Yalin had killed people, the villagers were against him, and the revelation of the truth was only a question of time. He knew that the only way to save his life was to flee, and he was willing to take any risk necessary to start afresh. When Yalin instructed Beza to pack her things, she resisted going out of the community. She was hoping for a second chance at life with Yalin and had always thought that things would be different for them in Assos. But maintaining a harmonious existence with Yalin seemed improbable. She made an effort to persuade Yalin by pointing out that they lacked the funds to start over. Yalin revealed to her the one million euros he had stashed in his briefcase after unlocking it. Beza was shocked to realize that Yalin had not grown from his prior errors. He retained a million euros out of the money he conned people out of rather than giving it back. Beza had hoped that Yalin would improve after losing everything he had erroneously accumulated, but he remained the same. He was aware that his actions were contributing to people's suicides, but he still did nothing to stop it. Beza admitted that she was the one who entered the district attorney's office and told them the truth during their debate. Yalin was regarded as a devout businessman, and not even the district attorney's office accepted her account. But when she presented them with the proof, they became aware of how deftly Yalin had conned the entire country. Even though her parents were against the marriage, Beza made the decision to wed Yalin. But over time, she came to understand how self-absorbed he was, barely making room for her. 
Yalin was surrounded by people who followed his instructions, and no one was around to call attention to the monster he had become. Beza thought he would learn a lesson and live a moral life after losing all of his fortune. But she recognized that his only goal was to wait for the public to forget his crime rather than actually trying to reform. Even when everyone else departed, she made the decision to stay with him, but eventually she gave up. As Beza got ready to pay the money to the DA, Yalin exploded in wrath. She fell to the ground when he struck her with a hammer on the back of her skull. After killing Beza, Yalin felt good about himself. He did it to show her that he was still a formidable businessman in Istanbul, one who could exact punishment on anybody who dared to betray his confidence. Yalin's ego never dies, and even though he first believed he might change for the better, he eventually came to terms with the fact that he was a nasty guy who did whatever it took to survive. Yalin had a boat waiting to transport him to Greece, but he changed his mind. He didn't want to continue living in dread after killing Beza. He offered the one million euros to the locals instead of taking off with it to start a new life. The people gladly took it even though it was possibly much more than they had invested. They adopted a different attitude regarding Yalin. Salami, the police officer, opted to disregard the missing person reports after collecting the money. He was prepared to believe that the three fatalities did the same thing because many people left the area to travel across the sea. Nobody questioned Yalin about his wife when he said that she had left the village. The locals served him breakfast and handed him fresh fruits. He finally conceded that he was a self-centered individual who felt no remorse for the crimes he had perpetrated. Yalin's survival despite the murders and scams demonstrates how, in our materialistic world, it is simple to purchase loyalty and silence with money.